And so we're going to try and do the same thing with triangle A, B, and C that we did with sine, but this time we're going to try and do it with cosine and see if we can use cosine to talk meaningfully about the six variables we have here, the three angles and the three sides across from those angles. So we're going to approach it the same way. We are going to start by drawing altitude H. And this time, since we are working with cosine, that base and how it is split into two parts is going to be important to us. So we're going to define a new variable. We're going to define the distance from that intersection of the base and the height to point C. We're going to label that as X. And that means from A to that same intersection, uh, instead of picking a new variable, uh, we're going to refer to that as B minus X. Uh, since we already know that B is the length of the entire base. So we're going to start off and we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to represent side length C, which is the hypotenuse of that left-sided triangle. I'm labeling it as triangle 1. And we know that C squared is going to be equal to H squared plus B minus X squared. Next, we're going to write expressions for sine and cosine of angle C. Sine of C, much like we did with the last rule, H over A. And cos of C, X over A. And this is why we defined that new variable X. Again, I'm going to take sine of C's equation. I'm going to isolate the H and rewrite this as H is equal to A sine of C. And the reason we're going to do that is because that will allow us to substitute an expression back into that original equation for h. Put it back into terms of angle measurements and side lengths on the original triangle. Likewise, with cos of c, we're going to isolate the x and call this x equals a cos c. Again, allowing us to create a substitution for something back in the original Pythagorean theorem uh, that lets us rewrite those terms back into things that are in terms of A, B, and C. And so now with this substitution, we're going to rewrite our Pythagorean theorem. C squared is equal to A sine C squared plus B minus A cos C squared. We're going to spend a little time simplifying this and trying to get it into a, a neater format. If you want to pause and, and square these things out and see if there's anything you can do to simplify, you could try that. Uh, but we're going to square A sine C. So C squared is equal to A squared sine squared C. We're going to foil uh, B minus A cos C, getting B squared minus 2AB cos of C plus a squared cos squared c. And when I look at this, I notice something useful. These two terms share an a squared. And not only that, but if I come over here and I factor that a squared out, you get a squared times sine squared c plus cos squared c. And that should look familiar because that is equal to 1. And so these two terms can just be uh, simplified to a squared times 1 or a squared, giving us our final form and the rule that we're going to refer to as law of cosines. c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. Notice how similar that looks to the uh, Pythagorean theorem. Minus 2ab cosine of c. And we have another formula that allows us to use cosine this time on a triangle that is not a right triangle. And as long as we have three of these pieces of information, we can solve for the, the fourth one, whichever three we happen to have. Now it is important to note that since this is not a right triangle, c does not mean the hypotenuse. And even more importantly than that, c does not mean the longest side of the triangle. This formula can be used for any of the sides of the triangle. And so what's important is that we recognize that while C is any side, the angle here has to be the angle opposite of that side. 
whichever side we happen to be trying to use this formula to help us solve for. And then the other two side lengths that are referred to, A, B, A, B, those don't have to be the two shortest sides. They are not the two legs because, again, this is not a formula for right triangles. We already have regular trig functions for the right triangles. Uh, these two are the other two sides in the triangle. Sometimes you see the formula rearranged to be written for any side of the triangle. Um, uh, I, I think it is best if we understand how this formula can be applied to any triangle, regardless of which side length we're working with or referring to. So I encourage you to stick to this one form and make sure that when you go to the practice problems and, a, and homework assignment that you can apply it to various different triangles with different given pieces of information.